This is Electric Universe Eyes, and today I'm going to narrate The Great Comet Venus by David Talbot, 1997. A section titled, Venus the Planet. As if to symbolize an ancient tie to the Earth, Venus returns to its same position in the sky every 584 days, called a synodical year. Five Venus synodical years equal eight Earth years. At its closest approach to the Earth, it always shows the same hemisphere, Hence, both its rotation and its revolution around the sun present a fascinating synchronous relationship with the movement of our planet. A Venus day or full rotation turns out to be longer than its sidereal year, revolution around the sun, but is equal to the interval between the planet's closest approaches to the Earth. Though Venus is about the same size as Earth, Venus is 12,080 kilometers in diameter, while Earth is 12,728 kilometers, and its orbit quite close to that of the Earth, there is little else in common between the two worlds. For reasons not easily explained, Venus appears as a fish out of water in our solar system, since astronomers consider both its rotation rate and direction of rotation as bizarre. Whereas the usual planetary pattern is rotation from west to east, Venus rotates from east to west. And while the enshrouded orb of Venus spins very, very slowly, taking 243 Earth days to complete one rotation, above the surface, the massive atmosphere races around the planet at twice hurricane force, or almost 400 kilometers per hour, circling the planet in just four days. No prior theory of planetary dynamics can account for this seemingly impossible situation. Astronomers, in drawing the new profile of Venus, often summon medieval images of the fires of hell. Venus, it turns out, is a doomsday world looking for an explanation. Massive clouds of sulfuric acid and carbon dioxide 20,000 meters high create an atmospheric pressure at the surface some 90 times that of the Earth. The temperature at the surface may be as high as 900 degrees Fahrenheit, vastly hotter than scientists expected 40 years ago. For astronomers, the most dramatic new look at Venus came with the Magellan probe, launched in 1989. When Magellan moved into orbit around Venus on August 10, 1990, its detailed radar portrait of our closest neighbor displayed features as small as 100 meters across. The result was the most sweeping change in theoretical perspective since scientific study of Venus began. Nothing is more striking about Venus or indicative of unanticipated planetary stresses than the dominating presence of volcanoes covering virtually every square kilometer. This presence being emphasized as well by broken volcanic rocks strewn across the face of the planet. A minimum of 100,000 volcanoes have been estimated, causing one scientist to declare that the entire planet is one big volcano. But what was the source of the massive planetary stresses involved? In geological terms, much of the lava flow is incredibly recent, covering vast portions of the surface and throwing normal dating systems into chaos. Astronomers have traditionally guessed at the formative periods of a planet's or moon's surface by the number of impact craters. The more craters, the older the surface. But in the case of Venus, much of the surface has been so recently covered, eliminating all craters, that no reliable dating is possible. On the geological timescale, for all we know, whole portions of the surface were re-sculpted only yesterday. The mystery was duly noted by Science Magazine. The planetary geologists who are studying the radar images streaming back from Magellan find that they have an enigma on their hands. When they read the geologic clock that tells them how old the Venusian surface is, they find a planet on the brink of adolescence. But when they look at the surface itself, they see a newborn babe. Indeed. A great deal of volcanic activity is apparently still going on, certainly much more than any astronomer had expected. Complementing the planet-wide lava flows are the many suggestions of crustal movement with continental scale stretching and folding, together with stupendous rifts creating zigzag lines or fractures reaching across much of the planet's surface. Immense fractures and spider-like patterns called arachnoids have no terrestrial counterparts stretch up to 250 kilometers across. Even larger formations, likened to failed souffles, both in appearance and in formative process, are the giant Corona Great Volcanic Domes, hundreds of kilometers in breadth. Rising under the pressure of expanding lava, then collapsing as the lava oozed away. 
that an Earth-sized planet settled in its own quiet corner of the solar system would generate volcanic activity on such a scale is a mystery not easily resolved by traditional theories of planet formation. Add one more piece to the Venusian puzzle. Astronomers are now musing over the paradox of water, or one should say the absence of water, for there are indications that Venus once had water in abundance. Now there is none. On any scenario, accounting for this disappearance of water, there has been a massive escape of gas from Venus, at the very least the hydrogen component, due to dissociation of hydrogen and oxygen in the upper atmosphere.